Hi, my name's Rob Walker, my pronouns are he, him, and I am a senior software engineer at Formidable. My talk today is about visual regression testing in React Native. If you'd rather watch these slides on your own device, you can access them now at bit.ly forward slash rn hyphen vrt. Now, to start, I'd love for you to draw me on a little story. Imagine you're building an app, perhaps an e-commerce app. And that app's got a shopping cart uh, with a checkout button and the total price, as you'd expect. And one day you're working on a separate part of the app, perhaps uh, changing the styling on the login screen. And uh, you decide that you should go and do a search and replace, swap the min width for the width, and that works great. Your login screen looks fine, login works, uh, you create a PR, your tests run, everything passes, nobody spots the issue. So let's ship the app. And as soon as it gets in the hand of your users, you start getting loads of negative reviews on the app stores. Uh, and when you go to see why, you discover, obviously, search and replace was a little bit too broad, and you've completely screwed up your shopping cart screen, leaving some very you know, confused users. And this is where visual regression testing comes in. So with visual regression testing, it, the visual aspect covers everything that your user can see in the app. So the layouts, the styles, the colors, the images, even the contents of the image itself, all the text that you can see, and the flows, by which I mean kind of multi-stage processes, perhaps an onboarding flow or a full checkout flow. And the regression testing is trying to catch any accidental or unexpected changes, such as the one in our example, uh, and trying to catch as well any kind of broken flows or processes in the app where maybe individual screens are fine, but when you try to actually use them, uh, the end result isn't quite what you expect. So, Visual regression testing is normally implemented by taking screenshots of the app and comparing those screenshots. So your baseline screenshot, uh, you would have that normally committed into version control, and that is a known good state of the app. And then every time you make some changes in your app, you would rerun all the screenshots and compare them uh, to create a diff. And if there's some differences, then that could indicate that something has gone wrong and your tests would fail. If the screenshots match, then you know, that's a pass, and nothing unexpected has happened. So how do we prevent these kinds of issues today? More often than not, it's through lots of manual testing. Uh, and manual testing is obviously really important. Uh, you probably do it every time you're making a change to the app already. And it's great for exploratory testing. So you might make, make, make a number of changes to an app and then spend some time just playing with your app, checking out some key features to make sure nothing has unexpectedly changed. And it's really flexible. And you can also outsource it. So as a developer, it's quite often good to have somebody else test your work. And they might find some issues that you've not considered. And you can outsource it to those kind of other developers or there's third party companies that can uh, dedicate people to spend time you know, testing your app for you. But obviously, there's a few issues. It's very easy to miss things, and it's very time consuming because it's a manual process. And it's hard to catch small changes. So if you're testing an app, you might not spot that an image has changed or the styles are different in some way if you didn't know exactly what should have been there to start with. You can use just snapshot tests. So this is where you serialize the output of a component. So you might serialize the JSX, perhaps the style object. And then you can compare uh, the serialized output after a change uh, with like the known good baseline uh, and see if anything unexpected has happened. This is quite fast to implement. Uh, and it's very fast to run. And you can run it on CI. So there's nothing manual uh, required to actually run the tests. But these tests only you know, test in isolation. So you might uh, do a snapshot test of your button component, a snapshot test of uh, the contents of a, a list view. Uh, but you're not testing how those things are working when they're combined in different ways uh, on the actual screen for a user. 
And it doesn't test flow, so you can't test like every step of an onboarding flow to check that it actually works end to end. Uh, and often you're only comparing the, the JSX or maybe the styles. You're not comparing like, the contents of the images and how it looks on the screen. And the third, probably the, the rarest form, is visual regression tests. So this tests the entire UI, everything that's actually rendered to the screen. Uh, you can check multiple stage flows. So you're actually going through, say, a login process uh, on the phone, screenshotting it as you go. You can check that you do get to the end state. And you can run it on CI. So because you, you can use an emulator or a simulator in a CI environment, you can, you can run it there, removing the need to kind of manually run your tests. However, it, it can be more difficult to set up. Uh, it's slower to run on CI because you're having to install and boot and run an emulator. And they can be potentially flaky. So with our example earlier, you know, it's such a, an obvious issue that it's likely that any type of testing there would have caught it. You know, a tester would have seen this issue. Snapshot tests, if you were testing the styles, would have uh, indicated that the style had changed in this component. And visual regression tests, if you had a screenshot of the shopping cart screen, that would have indicated it had changed. But how about a more subtle change? So here you can see a shopping cart screen, and the user is scrolling down the screen. And at the end of a scroll view, there's uh, an Apple Pay button, a PayPal button. And fixed beneath the scroll view is a normal checkout button. When the user releases their scroll after over-scrolling, it kind of settles where one of the buttons is partly obscured by the checkout button. Now, with manual testing, I think it's quite likely that if someone had just been testing this flow quickly, they could easily have missed that. They might never have scrolled to the bottom of the scroll view. Uh, they might have scrolled just enough to hit the Apple Pay button. Maybe they scrolled all the way, but didn't realize that uh, like the over scroll, and then when it bounced back, it was obscuring the button. So it would be quite easy to miss. Uh, I think snapshot tests, uh, you could also easily have missed this issue. Uh, because if you were serializing the uh, button component, nothing there has changed. If you were serializing and comparing the contents of the scroll view, nothing there's changed. It's only how the scroll view and the button are interacting uh, relative to each other that creates this problem. Visual regression tests, if you had taken a screenshot after uh, scrolling the scroll view, then there would have been, there's a visual differences when you compare a screenshot from before this issue to after this issue. So that would have indicated that something maybe has gone wrong on this screen. So how can we implement some visual regression tests today? Well, I'm going to show you a demo using React Native OWL, which is a visual regression testing library for React Native. Uh, and the aim of React Native OWL is to make it as easy as possible to get started with visual regression tests. Uh, to achieve that, it has a few components. So there's a really small CLI that you use to, to build and run your app for your tests. There's a custom jest matcher, which is used to uh, compare the screenshots with the baseline and the latest screenshots, and kind of control whether the test fails or passes based on that. There's an interaction API, which allows your tests to interact with the app in the simulator. So you can do things like press on buttons, scroll, scrollables, um, enter, enter text uh, into inputs. Uh, and then there's a report generator. So uh, when your tests pass or fail, you want to be able to find out easily like, what was wrong if there was an issue. Uh, so you can easily go and fix that. So like most things nowadays, it's fairly easy to install. You can just yarn add React Native OWL. And then you add a small config file. So this example uh, has a configuration for both running your visual regression tests on Android and iOS. Uh, and for this uh, example that I'll show in a minute, we're using uh, Infinite Red's uh, Ignite uh, Bootstrap to kind of get a demo app working really quickly. And then you write your, your jest tests like normal. So this example uh, test is essentially going to press on a button where the test ID matches 
uh, next uh, screen button. Then it's going to take a screenshot of the resulting rendered screen uh, and call that screenshot demo screen. And then it's going to expect that the screenshot you've taken matches the, the baseline screenshot that's previously been taken using the same kind of name for the ID. And if there's no differences, it passes, it's great. But if there's uh, an issue, it will fail. Uh, now, this is the whole demo uh, test that I'm going to show you running in a minute. It's probably quite hard to read, but essentially, it's going to take a screenshot of the welcome screen, click a button to get to another screen, a further button to get to like a list view screen, uh, taking screenshots along the way, and then it's going to scroll to the end of the list view and take a further screenshot. Before you can run the tests, uh, you have to use the, the React Native Owls build command so that it, it you know, builds the app, um, but it also builds it in a way in which React Native Owl can interact with the app while it's running. And then you run test. Uh, in this example, we're, we're building and testing for iOS, but it works just the same for Android. So it's just run our test there. As you can see, it's, it's fairly quick once the app's launched. Um, and if you're pretty eagle-eyed, uh, you'll see in the output that it's actually uh, indicating that it's creating the baseline screenshots as it goes. So this is the first time we're, we're running the tests. Um, if we see some of the output there, uh, you can see it's actually creating the baselines. And once you've checked that the baseline screenshots uh, look fine, you're happy with them, then those you commit into version history uh, and that's what your future tests will, be com will use to compare uh, against. Um, and you can look at those easily. They're just stored uh, in like a baseline iOS directory. So there's, uh, there's the four screenshots we took. You can see the welcome screen one there. If you now run the tests again, this time you get a different set of screenshots. We already had baseline, so now we go and create the latest screenshots. Uh, and because we've not change anything in the app, as you would expect, there's no differences. So the, in this case, the baseline and the latest will actually be an identical set of images. Uh, and it also generates the report. So because everything is passed, uh, our report just shows the four screenshots that all pass tests. So we can check that uh, kind of the test coverage uh, is, is pretty good. Uh, if anything isn't included in these screenshots, then you want to go back and maybe update your tests to get a screenshot that covers the thing that you're interested in. Um, but in our case, we're happy. So now we're going to go and actually change something in the app. Um, the Bootstrap app came with this image on the left. Uh, we want to swap that out with the formidable logo on the right to get something that looks more like this. So after making that change, if we run the test now, uh, as you would expect, the, one of the tests will fail. The welcome screen where the image is shown uh, will now fail. Uh, and you can see it's pretty clear that the screenshot didn't match. Um, but you, know, you can't really learn that much more about why it hasn't matched here. But if we go and look in the uh, files again, you'll see there's now in the diff folder, we have a, an image that was generated uh, that will help us debug the issue uh, if we're not sure why it doesn't match. Uh, and the image looks something like this. So you can just about make out uh, all of the parts of the latest and the baseline that match are kind of grayed out. So you can just about make it out, uh, but only just. But everything that changed is really clearly highlighted in red. So if this was an unexpected change, it would be really easy to see exactly what, you know, what caused the test failure. And if we look at the report. Uh, you can see even more clearly, we see the, the baseline and the latest and the diff. Um, so that will make it really clear what's changed. Now, this was quite a, a big, obvious change, but it works great for really small things too. So if you accidentally you know, changed some of your text in the app, so in this case, we're going to sort of swap the exclamation mark for the full stop, make a really small change. It works just as efficiently. Uh, after we've built and run the tests, then you'll get a test failure. Now, it's kind of not that clear uh, what's, diff what's changed, because it is so kind of minute. But if you, if you kind of take an eagle-eyed look, uh, you'll notice that it does actually still indicate exactly what's wrong. Uh, so something that a tester would never see, um, 
you know, we can catch reliably uh, with some visual regression tests. So going back to the image change, now we made this image change on purpose. So it's not unexpected, it's not a bug. We're happy uh, to update our baseline images. Now we know this change exists. Um, so that future tests are compared against like an updated baseline. And you can do that either by copy pasting the files in the file explorer, or you can just run the tests again with an update flag um, when it will just go and run through the test, but instead of creating the latest screenshots, it will just update all the baselines. And you can see here uh, that's, that's happened. So uh, we've now got a modified welcome screen baseline, which we can then go and commit that to version control. Uh, and now all of our future test runs will be based on the formidable logo instead of the, the placeholder image that was there. Now, if we'd been using something like this uh, when we did our find and replace kind of ever earlier on, uh, we could have prevented the app ever getting into the hands of users uh, automatically. So uh, once we had made that change, uh, we'd have pushed it up to Git, maybe open to PR, uh, PR tests could have been run, including the visual regression tests, and we would have seen something like this in GitHub, you know, completely blocking us from doing the merge uh, and making it kind of obvious what the problem was when you started looking into it. Now, there's also a bonus feature that you get for free um, when you use something like this. So if you create a PR and you have to update your baseline images uh, as part of that PR, because those new images form part of your pull request, then somebody reviewing your pull request will be able to see directly in GitHub uh, the before image and the after image uh, of your updated baselines. So for changes that have some uh, new content or style changes, uh, it's really easy for a reviewer, without even having to launch the app, to be able to see exactly what it looks like when it's running on your phone, both before and after. Uh, which should make it really easy to quickly approve or reject uh, pull requests. Now, there are some other options. Uh, you can use Detox, which is uh, for React Native, which is a really powerful testing uh, library. Uh, Detox, you, you can uh, take screenshots uh, with, and if you can take screenshots, then you can um, set up some kind of image comparison, image diffing, similar to how React Native Owl does, uh, and you can implement uh, visual regression tests that way. Uh, and on the web, you can also use something like Cypress, and Cypress has uh, several visual regression testing extensions that, again, work in a very similar way, um, but for web-based uh, React. Uh, Thank you very much for listening. I hope everybody has learned something about visual regression testing or React Native OWL. Uh, and I'd love to hear any stories about how it goes if people want to give it a try. Uh, again, these slides are available at bit.ly forward slash rn hyphen vrt if anyone would uh, like to look back on them. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>